Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing series. In this episode, we will go ahead and turn on the segment routing on our topology. So in the last episode, we went ahead and verified the all the underlay connectivity. We verified whether our IGP is working or not. We made sure we have an end-to-end -end reachability and everything. So from there now, we'll go ahead and pick up. And in this episode, we will go ahead and enable segment routing across all of our routers except our SRPC and route reflector. So we'll go ahead and turn on the segment routing on all the nodes including the CE nodes, PE nodes as well as the P routers. We will also go ahead and assign a globally unique prefix SID if you remember that which is also called as your node SID. And we will be using the loopback interfaces and we will probably uh, assign them in certain order as well as we will go ahead and define a segment routing global block which is also called as your srgb block and for our demonstration we will use a standard range again as cisco recommends it's a good practice to have same srgb block across all the nodes so we will go ahead and do that so we will go ahead and once the segment routing is turned on we will go ahead and verify by doing certain show commands to see once the segment routing is turned on, what are the different things that we see in our topology and how are they, you know, being seen in our kind of a topology primarily. So with that, let's go ahead and get kind of a started here and we can go ahead and start doing our configuration. So let's go ahead and start configuring our CE node one. So let's go ahead and log into CE node one. So simply right click on C node one and go to the console port. Now let's log into this router using the default username and password. And let's verify what is the configuration we have under our IGP ISIS. And as you can see, IGP has the very standard configuration with the net and there is address family. The metric style wide is turned on. Then we have a loopback interface, but we don't have anything else really configured here. So the very First thing that we need to do on any router to start the segment routing, we need to go ahead and define the sRGB block. So let's go into the config mode for this router. And the very first thing we'll go ahead and create the our sRGB block. And if I just simply press a question mark here and you know let's go to the S and quickly take a look what it talks about. So if you see here we have that says segment routing. Okay, hey. To really turn on the segment routing, we need to go ahead and type the segment hyphen routing and let's press a question mark. With the segment routing, there are a few options that are available to us. Or I can simply press and enter and go into the segment routing configuration mode. Or we can go ahead and configure probably like an adjacency SID. There is a global block and some of the other things. So in this case, we are interested in configuring a global block, which is your prefix SID global block, which is also known as SRGB. So let's go ahead and say segment routing global block so with the segment routing global block uh, on the same because now we are typing on the same line so now we need to go ahead and give a lower range the starting rate and if you recall it starts from 16,000 so we'll go ahead and use that from 16,000 and then we can go ahead and give the upper range how many what is the range for this uh, block that we really need so our topology is very small but let's go ahead and pick a very standard range. So I'll do from 16,000 to really 17,000. So we just went ahead and turned on or we just went and configured an sRGB block starting from 16,000 to 17,000. And the block that we are configuring, it's a global onto this router. That means any of the IGP process can go ahead and consume this sRGB block. If you wanted this block to be an IGP process specific, in that case, we need to go inside the IGP process and we need to go ahead and write this command there. So that way, this that block becomes that IGP process specific and not a global block. So now we just went ahead and simply turned on the sRGB or we just configured the sRGB block on this particular router. So that is the very first step that we need to repeat on all the routers. Now the second thing we need to go ahead and turn on, we have just configured the sRGB block, but we have not turned on the segment routing. So to turn on the segment routing, we need to go inside our IGP process and we need to go ahead and turn on that. So let's just simply say here, 
the router ISIS 100. Once you are inside the router ISIS 100, now we will go ahead and simply uh, go inside one of the address family that we are interested into. So now the address family we are dealing is the IPv4. So we'll say address family IPv4 unicast. And if I just simply press a question mark here, we would get to see some of the options. And let's see, do we have an option that says a segment routing? And yes, we do have an option that says segment routing, enable segment routing. So we'll just simply say segment routing. And if you see with the segment routing, there are different options. So one of the options, it says MPLS, enable segment routing using MPLS encapsulation. If you remember, we had talked about two different type of a data plane uh, that we can use. One is the MPLS, another is SRV6. So in this case, we are using MPLS. So we'll just say segment routing MPLS. If you press a question mark, you would you can just simply press an enter here. That is good enough because this is a new topology and that is the only as a uh, thing that is running but let's say you have an existing mpls environment where you have an ldp running and you're trying to migrate from ldp to segment routing in that case i can go ahead and say sr prefer and it says what prefer segment routing over ldp labels this makes more sense as i said if you have an mp mpls already existing running but as a good practice, again, you know, I'm assuming you might be interested in migrating or some of the things. So you can go ahead and simply say SR prefer. Again, SR prefer is an optional command here. If you are really need to, you know, prefer the segment routing labels over the LDP label. In this topology, we don't have an MPLS, so, but we can simply leave that. Or we can just simply turn on saying, okay, SR prefer means down the line. If in this topology, if I go ahead and enable the LDP, the system will still prefer the SR labels. So I'll just simply go ahead and press that enter. So this command is the one which is doing the real magic. So we just went ahead and turned on the segment routing on this particular node. Now, after turning on the segment routing on this particular node, now we need to go ahead and configure or assign a globally unique prefix SID to this particular router. And for that, we will use the loopback interface of this router to advertise that particular prefix set. As you saw, those loopback addresses are reachable throughout this topology. We are still inside the ISIS process. Now we'll go ahead and go inside the our interface uh, loopback. So we'll just say interface loopback to zero. Now we again go back inside the our address family. So we'll say address family IPv4 unicast. Now let's take a look at what are some of the options here. So one of the options you would see here it says prefix set specifies the prefix segment id and that's what we are interested in we want to assign a prefix set to this particular loopback or to this particular router so we'll just say prefix set so with the prefix set we can either assign an absolute if you recall during the theoretical part we have discussed you can assign a prefix set either as an absolute number or in the form of an index if you do an index it will be the srgb base which is 16,000 in our case followed by the index label so we can go ahead and either pick an absolute value or index. So I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and pick an index here. And followed by index, it says, okay, hey, you can go ahead and assign a prefix set index. So this is our very first router. The base is 16,000. So let me go ahead and pick an index of one. So that means this particular router will have a prefix set of 16,001. And the whole topology will know this router with the prefix set of 16,001. As you recall in the MPLS, MPLS have a concept of a local label and remote label. There is no such thing in SR. In SR, we have only one label, which is your global level label. So that means your local label as well as your remote label is same 16,000. So for if we if we look at CE2, CE2 will still see a 16,001. That means this is the label or this is the node that we are referencing. There is no concept of a local label versus remote label. These are global labels basically. So now let's simply go ahead and turn on the prefix set index one here. And once that is done, this kind of completes our basic configuration. So what we all we did here, if we go ahead and take a quick look, we simply configured a segment routing global block using the segment routing global block command, where we went ahead and configured a global block of 16,000 to 17,000. Then we went inside our router ISIS process. We went inside the address family and we turned on the segment routing MPLS as well as we use the keyword SR prefer that says, okay, prefer the SR labels over LDP labels. If you have an MPLS running, if not, that is not needed. 
Then we went inside the interface loopback zero and we went and assigned a globally unique prefix SID to the loopback address. And in this case, we are using the prefix index basically instead of using an absolute value. Now just simply go ahead and save all the changes by using the commit command. So now once that is done, the commit is going through. I will take a couple seconds. Now once that is the commit is done, now just simply go ahead and do a show run on this node and we'll go ahead and review the configuration that we just did here. So now I'm just scrolling it through. Otherwise I could have, you know, a set particular specific configuration. Now if you take a look at our router ISI process 100, under his address family IPv4, Unicast, we said, okay, hey, segment routing MPLS is our prefer. And then under interface loopback zero, inside the address family, we just went ahead and assigned a global prefix set index of one. And if you scroll further down, you would see our segment routing global block is enabled on this particular router. So now we just need to repeat the same configuration across all the nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, pretty much repeat the same configuration across all the nodes. And let me go ahead and start doing that. Now we'll go ahead and log into P2. Let's quickly log into P2. Cisco, Cisco, go to the config mode. And I will be assigning a prefix set of 2 to this router. I'm saving the change. Now let's come back here. The P2. Cisco, Cisco, configuration mode. And I'm also giving a prefix set of 3 here. Just commit the changes. Now let's come to P1 router. We'll go ahead and configure the P1 router. I think there was some typo. Uh, no, that's okay. Now come to the P P1 router. Let's log into your P1 router. Go to the config mode. Assign a prefix index of 1 to P1 router. Now let's come to our P router. We'll go ahead and give a prefix index of 5 to this one. Now I'm just primarily repeating the same configuration across all the routers. Now 5 is done. Let's go to the P3 router. And the P3 router will go ahead and give a prefix index of 6 in this case. Save the changes. Now come to our P4 router. Now we'll go ahead and give a Uh, four, five, six, seven. Come in the changes. Now let's assign, do the same configuration on P3. We'll go ahead and give an index of eight here. Save the changes. Uh, let's do on P4. Give a prefix index of 9. Now let's come back to our last router, which is our CE2 router. And just simply go ahead and do the configuration on CE2. Let's give a prefix index of 10 here. And commit the changes primarily. 